Hey. Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is me, your caster, Blackstar. And introduce yourself, my friend. Uh, hi, it's Mortal. <laughs> one, two, two. I'm, uh... Yeah, I'm Mortal, one, two, two. One of the admins slash original founders with, uh, with Tony. <laughs> and as I recall, one team doesn't have bans, right? Yeah, so Team Side loses all their bans because they made a last minute substitution. Um, I won't get to the details, but yeah. And just recall, these are this is Team Psy versus Kimichi, right? Uh, New York, sorry. <laughs> I keep saying New York. It could be New York, but I don't know what it stands for. It's NYNBW. Oh, okay, and against Truly Outrageous. No, this is NYNBW versus Team Psy. Oh, okay. And on blue side is NYBW? Uh, that's Team Psy. Okay, cool. Yeah, so Team Psy loses all their bands. And my NBW has all three. So we just have to wait for... Actually, we're done. We got through all the bands, so now we're actually into the picks. We have a Vigar, Lux, and Gragas band. And Vigar, I think, I think that band is more directed at just in general. It's a, a really strong pick. Um, the Lux, however, is directed towards Choco Bear as uh, he has been known to have a really good Lux. Um, as for the Gragas band, they are using a substitute jungler, so I don't know if they had time to really do any research on on uh, his jungling habits, but. Overall, Greg is still a really strong pick. Um, very good engage and disengage, depending on your use of uh, ultimate. That's right, he provides a lot to a team composition. So we're going to see with these bands right here. Oh, it looks like it's going to be Tam Camp's potential first pick. Surprise. Yeah. Wow. I'm not saying that Tam Camp isn't a bad first pick option by any means, but when you consider all the other options that you have open for first pick, it's pretty interesting that they had that as their priority and they have. Call them all Lulu on the other side, so it's gonna be a potential juggernaut come from NYMBW, but still too a little too early to call. Maybe it's just a Lulu just to give the call Maul some type of self and then they like round up their whole composition with other things. But we'll see what team side does right here. If I was team side, I would consider taking away well actually they can't they actually can't even take away Janet right now because we have Tam locked in as a support pick unless you're trying to do like a Tam top and then a Janet support. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to see what they do here. If I was them, I would try to draft some type of hard engage if it is a Juggernaut comp. Because if it is Juggernaut, then you need the hard engage to help you fight against it. Yeah, and speaking of, of Juggers, um, none of the Juggernauts have been banned. They're all available right now. Um, it's actually going to be Echo Vein. That's an uh, interesting, interesting and comp. That's uh, the Vein going over to Abe. And um, so far, Egulin locking in that um, Tom Kench. So it's going to be Tom Kench in Vein bot lane. Um, we'll see how, if Lulu is going to be mid top or support. And right now, it looks like it's going to be a support Lulu. So right now, it could be, it's still Echo Flex because it could go either jungle or mid. So we're not exactly sure where it's going to be right now. Yeah. Um, we do have that the Amumu and Nar, so they're really looking for that like team comp protect the Kogma. No matter what. That that Amumu is actually, you know, pretty good pick, especially for protecting um Kogma. You just get in the way of everyone, throw down your ult, and then Kogma can just go to town from the out outside. Right, this is true, but there are now the problems of just getting out of the early game because I feel that this composition is going to have a hard time with getting out of the early game. Like, you have to make sure you're even, or like, you have to be some even ish around like the 15 to 20 minute mark with this composition, or else it's just going to be like really hard for you to come back if they like so much advantage over you in terms of like tower gold. Yeah. We do have the cast then. Being hovered, I don't think that's gonna get. Well, actually, it could get through. Oh, well, could be a top cast and then mid Azir, and that is actually what's gonna be. So we have pretty much four magic damage dealers and then a vein. It's 
So this is some interesting compositions right here. So I disagree with the Zed pick just because with the composition that you have, Zed doesn't really exactly fit into it in terms of 5v5 team fighting. Yeah. Not to mention that there's a lot of self peel on the enemy side because if Zed tries to ult Azir, you have the Emperor Zavai. You can't all cast him because one of Cassin's core items is Hourglass, and the Cassin can just rip walk away from a large portion of the damage. Yeah. And then if he tries to target Vayne, Tankesh can just eat Vayne. And then that, and then he isn't able to put follow up damage after the Death to like actually make the damage count. So I really don't like the Zed pick here, but we'll see if they can somehow make it work. Uh, hold on. Uh, one second. Take it away for. Yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting to see what exactly happens between these two teams. So, we see the, the Sumner usage being switched to the exhaust for the Azir, which is a pretty smart call to have double exhaust against in the a Zed. But one of the things I'm very interested about is whether or not they can make the Kassin top pick work, because I feel that Kassin's early game is a little too weak to utilize well, because when you see the composition that NY, NYMBW draft, they want to pick an early to mid game scaling top laner, especially you have Fiora and Darius still open, even though Darius and Fiora has got some nerfs ever since patch 5.18. I still think they're very strong picks and in a situation like this, it would have been good to have drafted one of them. Potentially Fiora instead of Darius here since they did pick up the NAR for their top laner. Yeah, and uh, we'll see how how that uh, Kassin versus NAR matchup goes. I actually, I was a fan of Kasten in top lane a little bit earlier in the year. I don't know how strong it is now, especially with so many power picks. But none of the, the um, juggernauts have been chosen, so I guess we'll, we'll see how he plays it. Also, that mid lane matchup, I actually really like the Azir versus Zed matchup. It's, it's more of a, a skill. Um, skill lane. We'll see exactly who has the better mechanics. If there's one thing that I do like about what Team Side did was that you have a lot of zone control with the Emperor's Divide and the Peril Convergence. Mm -hmm. But I feel that Running Kassin for their composition just doesn't well run out the comp because it's like, okay, you have your Vayne as your late game damage source, and then you have Kassin, but at the same time, you have to ask yourself if you want to start a fight, what's going to be your primary form of engage? Because at this point, all I can see is them relying on the parallel convergence to like land a decent number of people. And even then, it's like after that, they don't have much follow up engage after that just because. Takes time catch a while just to stack up the stacks from the passive and then be able to devour its own enemy team. So I feel it's gonna be really difficult for them to start fights, especially or even looking for fights even. So we're gonna see how this game's gonna play out because I feel they're gonna have problems with that. Yeah, I agree. I think I really think that NYNBW won the um, pick ban phase right now. Um, they just seem like they have a very um, complementary team. They all fit together. They all have their different roles and pieces, and they just they they stick together. Um, and if Team Side doesn't isn't able to snowball the early game out of control, I, I do have to give the edge to NYMBW. And we do have the uh, skin war, the the fan popular skin war in the top, or sorry, not in the top lane, but we do have on the blue side only one, only one um, skin, Dragon <laughs> Slayer, Bane Chaos Chroma Edition. 
Whereas in the uh, the red side, we have Monarch, Kogma, Dino Nar, and Project Z. You know, speaking of Vayne, she's actually one of the more popular AD carry champions in ILOL. I've seen a lot of the picks being Vayne, Tristana, and Jinx in terms of the AD carry picks. And then this is like, I believe this was either the second or third time I've seen a Kogma. Kogma actually has a very good lane matchup into the thing just because he has he has weight clear over her and he has massive range over her and he also deals a good amount of magic damage which is something that is very good to have whenever you're laying against Vayne just some type of burst damage and you know Kalma isn't really bursty per se but he does have that that slight bit of damage once he gets the sheen it's just so much damage with the constant sheen process off of him using the bio arcane barrage after and then auto attack right after that or maybe even just uh or just his ultimate. Yeah, and we were talking about it yesterday for the last game, um, the uh, PBE changes. That Kogma with the machine gun, he he becomes a turret when. Uh, oh when yeah, he activates was his very humorous his, uh, the first time I saw it. Uh, I was like, this can't be this can't be balanced at all. Like yeah, yeah even though when it's active, it's like he uses sixty percent of his AD. Still, it's just like so much attack speed. Yeah. So there's no way that's going to be coming live, um, but we can look well, knowing to... Riot, looking at uh, pre-release Garner, not pre-release Garner, uh, release Garner after the he got reworked a bit on PB, 65% win rate day one. Yeah, actually, you're right. What I always say, man, everything Riot touches turns to broken thereafter. I have many, many good questions to ask Riot's panelist team if I ever had the opportunity. Yeah, like when um, when Devour or Sated Devour first came out, it's like, what were they thinking? What were they thinking was gonna happen with that? It was interesting because I've seen this strategy before. I've seen a team do this actually where they had all five of them stand inside of this one bush. This might have been the same team that did it, but I could be wrong in terms of like which team did it. Yeah, I feel like there are more aggressive positions they could uh, be. Like just a little bit more, like into that next uh, patch right there, that would have been good. As like no one's gonna invade that way unless like it's a full invade, and most of the teams haven't really been invading. I do like that they're standing right here just because the moon was very blue buff reliant. So if they try to make a blue buff steal, they'll know, and they need a moon to have blue buff in order to have that early clear for him. So it looks like we are going to have standard lanes right now. In the on the blue side of the map, we have Team Psy in the bot lane, Eglin on Tom Kench. The AD carry is going to be Ab Abe on Vayne. Jungler is Joe Hidden. Jo ja Jaden ja <laughs> on Echo. Mid lanes Choco Bear on the Azir, and the top lane is going to be I2E on Casta. And NYNBW's lineup is going to be Scarlet Santa on Balulu. Hacking now on Kogma. In the mid lane, we have Yang's 96 on that Zed. The jungler is going to be Zapadina on Amumu. And the top lane is X Mintos X, who is very close to dying because they are double jungling. So we do have some sort of difference between just normal solo queue. Um, Nar utilizing, uh, helping Amumu clear his own jungle, but they did get really low, both of them. I think what's going to be key for this matchup is how well the casting can snowball. Because, um, Echo can be tanky, but they don't really have a, a dedicated full tank. Like, um... And my NBW has. Right, because we have the casting that offers the backline pressure, but even then, I don't think it would be a good idea to try to dive onto their composition. Yeah. I used to love the uh, the tank it in build, where you just go cast in and full, full tank, and you just hop on the people and they can never get you off of them. 
You just more of a utility maid. You just hop on them, slow them with everything, and you, you build Iceborne, and no one's safe. So Mumu is probably either looking to go for a counter because he he was probably thinking that Echo was near there, but it looks like he's just gonna just back right now. Yeah. Uh, Mumu still hasn't taken her red right now, which is really interesting. Looking for that uh, extremely aggressive gank, as you see Yanks and Choco Bear exchanging some love taps. Right now, we do have a slight advantage in the top lane. Kasten does have 4 CS. Not too much, especially early in the game right now. We'll see the monitor. That top lane matchup, see how it goes. Nar was able to get four health pots uh, from double jungling, so able to sustain a lot of that damage that Kasten has. All that poke that he does early on in the game is very annoying. Annoying, but he still has the the same early game problems though. So needs yeah. a, a bit of time. He needs to get the I think catalyst as best as soon as possible for him. Cassidy's very deceptive in, in how much he struggles early on because he does do a lot of harass with Q and W. Yeah, so far pretty much lanes are even except for mid lane right now. Um, Yangs does have a 15 CS lead over that Azir. Azir, both champions did go back. Um. Oh, it seems Echo's gonna try to attempt a gank right here. See a yeah. lot of pings happening. Looks like they're yeah. gonna go for it with the parallel converters coming out. We'll be able to land Quagmaw. There is a double flash forward. Sun does land, and will he be eaten as well? Yes, he does, and this seems to be the end of the Quagmaw. That's first blood going over to Tam Kench. <laughs> you don't want your support to pick up the kill, but it is still first blood and something. Looking at the storm spell usage, he did use flash, but he didn't use heal. So that was smart him not to waste his heal in that situation. Yeah. We'll see if that's actually Tom Kench does a lot of damage, just surprisingly. Um, he his his uh, ultimate passive really doesn't like can take a toll on uh, whoever he's attacking. I mean, there's that, but I mean, just look at how much damage the Devourer does. We're talking, like, at max rank, it's like 32% of percent health damage. It's disgustingly yeah. good. Choco Bear doing her best to try and farm from the Zed. Zed doing a really good job zoning uh, Choco Bear away from experience and CS. Yeah, you can see in the items where you have a zero with a Doran's ring and a cloth armor. Yeah, compared to the brutalized, that's a lot of damage, and we could see, see some aggression. We do have the disengage from Choco Bear. That was very close to being uh, the death mark from Zed. Oh, this we is the game. The, the flash getting copped down. He seems to be able to live with the shadow. Moo -moo. Looking to try and do something, but see that as Zed is out, he just walks back. Oh, they're gonna try and go first, but he doesn't have the Emperor's of Fire. Zed, Death Mark goes down onto the Azir with the damage being enough to kill him, but he falls to Echo. Yeah, and so that was a one for one trade. They both ended up. Actually, Zed got a kill and Echo got the kill, so. Despite being. Exhausted Zed still managed to pump out a lot of damage there. Also, Azir went in with less than a quarter health. Yeah, there, I was actually surprised that he did that considering that he didn't have access to the Emperor's of Fight after just using it. Yeah. And so far, this Kogma is starting to get. A little bit of advantage on the vein in terms of CS. Um, as soon as he hits that power spike, though, he's gonna be pumping out 
quite a bit of damage and uh, definitely working to that right now. Um, it's currently sitting on 2400 gold, so um, almost able to complete that Triforce. We do have a gank coming from Amumu. Amumu is able to use the ult and stop Chocobear from getting away, and Yang's 96 is able to get that kill. That was a lot of damage. I was yeah. not expecting, like, I knew it was going to be bad for me. I wasn't expecting that much damage from Amumu. Yeah, the curse of, sorry, the um, the bandage toss managed to catch Azir from uh, just jumping away. And then the curse of the sad mummy it did so much damage, just held him there. Looks like Echo is going to find Amumu in his own jungle, but Yang's 96 here for the engage. There's a lot of damage not going to follow up. Meanwhile, in this top lane. We see the pings coming out, but it's still going to be pretty hard for this Azir in terms of this laning phase, just because as he's been able to finish the Seeker's arm guard, you guys still he's still going to be in a really bad spot against the Zed damage. Yeah. And uh, it looks like Amumu is going to be uh, converged on. You can actually, is he spotted? Yeah, I think the flash was just blown by Amumu. Um, and he's going to run into this Azir right now. Here comes Echo and Azir. But. That's going to be a safe Amumu. Egulin trying to lick away some wards there. Because uh, Echo is right now on his way to the bottom line. Seems like Hacking You Now and Scarlet Santa do suspect something. They know some aggression, some more aggression from Egulin right now. As Echo does back away, he is going to mid. He's going to get spotted by this ward. Uh, not going to follow up with anything. Just going to clear the ward and uh, back away. But yeah, that mid matchup. Not going too well for Chocobear. Yang's doing a very good job at just keeping her out of the lane. Asin's still not doing the greatest against Nar, but he's able to stay somewhat, even if Arnold, he's down about like 10 CS. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, Kassim does have that catalyst and was able to make it to... We have the pings coming out, though, so it seems Echo might try to attempt the gank, but there is a ward there from Nar, so he'll know. The ping is spied out, too, of the ward being there. Seems like Echo's gonna still go for this anyway, maybe. Yeah, he was spotted. Tried to sweep the, the brush. Brush wasn't warded, just a little bit past that was where the ward is. Oh, Pink Ward is gonna find it. And uh, Joden oh, is gonna go on to Xmentus. Xmentus taking a lot of damage. Gonna have to back away, but here comes the engage. Egglin trying to catch up to someone. Hacking now gets hit, has to flash away, and gets condemned against the wall to safety. Right now, the Kong is going to have to play very, very carefully if uh, Echo decides to come down bottom lane because this is a flash of Kog'Maw. Yeah. And um, right now, Lulu, very squishy. Very juicy target. As here comes the aggression from Egglin, trying to get the double, the triple proc. But here comes a teleport from the Gnar. Gnar going to teleport in. Uh, they did manage to back away just in time. And... His Mega Gnar just ran out, too. Yeah. Meganar got used as well. Yeah, so far, this, the, besides the mid lane, these matchups are pretty even. Um, although, there is a slight lead in terms of CS for um, NYNBW, and that's where that gold lead's coming from. Egglin. Going to stop the back from Secret Santa. Scar uh, sorry, Scarlet. <laughs> Secret Santa. Um, oh, he does oh, go for the, the flash. E. Oh, gets one more, two more auto attacks. Uses the oxygen, but it does not matter. And a bay gets the kill. I2E gonna have to dash oh. away. Gets the flash. Oh, I2E slowed. And he's gonna get a kill. Yes, he is. 
Team Sai going to take the Dragon here, seeing that uh, NYMBW's jungler was top side. And that is an easy free Dragon for Team Sai. Although they are down by about 1.4k gold. <laughs> Looks like Amumu and Nar trying to take down this turret. Um, and they are going to get it. It's really low. Uh, yeah, so far it looks like NYNBW does really have the the, uh, the edge here. They got the early lead, which could be a problem for Team Psy, seeing as that their team comp is... They, they have a clear plan what they want to do. And if they can execute it well enough... Um, not flawlessly, they just have to do a half decent job and they could uh, definitely dominate these team fights. You know, this is an interesting itemization by the set, but we'll get into that in a second because it seems that Lulu might actually get devoured again by the tan can she does, and then she gets spit back, which oh. they're not exactly going into the wall. That was a. Uh, you don't see that type of misplay from team size bot lane. They're usually pretty good. Uh, working together. But yeah, in, when you look at the itemization, I'm actually surprised that the Zed rushed the last whisper, but let's see if this last whisper will do anything for him as he gets ganked, as he flashes away from the echo damage, but echo is looking to go for the chrono break heal as they dive and actually get the kill on the Zed. Yeah, and he did manage to um, dodge the Emperor's Divide with that death mark. Almost got away. But yeah, how do you Dance feel about the, the Zed last whisper rush? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I like that, because there's no one that has armor except for Echo. So I think it's just Actually, it's not even armor. It's just HP from the Bambi Cinder. The only true, one has yeah. armor is just no one has armor, a Zer, so. and even then it's like less than 50 armor. Yeah, and he has a Brutalizer and Last Whisper, which is kind of unnecessary. And I feel like you don't even need Last Whisper into this team comp, because no one's going to be building armor that well exactly when it comes to armor aside from echo you're going to be expecting just our glasses from Kassin here yeah and i guess Tom kench is going to get somewhat tanky but still like it's it's not now's not the time professor oak would not be pleased <laughs> It looks well, like... a lot of aggression happening right here. I'm not sure they're going to look to just push the tower, just go for a dive with the Echo phase dives onto the Mumu. Yeah, and this could be dangerous. We'll see how they play this because uh, all the ultimates are still up. And so that Gnar on top of the uh, Curse of the Sad Mummy could be devastating. It seems, it seems like both teams not too comfortable with the situation back off as they look towards mid lane right now. It looks like doing a very good job. Zed beginning his initial split of the map. They're going to look to do a possible 1-3-1 one, one, or just a normal 1-4. Uh, a lot of pain's going off for this blue buff right here. As a teleport yeah. coming in from the cast, and as they steal a Mumu, oh, actually, a Mumu actually smited it, but the curse of seven comes out, but I don't think it'll be enough to let him live. And, and I2E does get that blue buff. But here comes the rest of NYMBW. X Mentosa and Scarlet Sand are going to get caught. This is a lot of damage, but here comes the rest of Team Side. That is three procs onto that Nar. Nar, nowhere close to becoming Mega Nar, and that is going to be a dead Mentosa. But here comes Zed. Zed going to try and get someone. Emperor's Divide comes out. Deathmark goes down on Eggulin. Eggulin going to fall down here. And that was a two-for-one trade in favor of Team Psy. So I felt that if you're in my MBW, once the movement got caught out, they all should have just ran away because this uh, it was Lulu Nar that was there after the movement got caught away. They both can get away because you have the hop from the Nar and you have the one from the Lulu. They should have been able to just get away, but you have to realize that in a situation like that, 
the Nar can't fight just because he doesn't have rage built up. He needs to have the rage and the Mega Nar access so that he can be able to do what Mega what Nar would want to do in a situation like that. Be able to somehow get like a four man ulti because if he was able to get a four man ulti and have Zed follow up with some type of damage, could have been a potential three v four win for him in their favor. But like I said, just so they have the Mega Nar rage. Yeah, and it's very tricky to do that as we do have some aggression, Aelin. Trying to catch out somebody, hacking out is able to get away. Do have some action in the top lane right now, and I think Cassin's starting to become very strong right now. Uh, three kills to Nars one. Oh, Aelin lands the Q. <laughs> Yeah, so far this this matchup in the top lane is going to start to go in favor of Nar if he's building like he is. I'm actually surprised he didn't finish trying to build another match resist down because while he do while you do need the armor stats for the vein, at this point in time you're not fighting against her just yet, so I felt that it would be better for him to just build another MR item before getting the next armor item. Yeah, I agree. Um, he is able to tank out a lot of that damage um, from Kasten. Um Looks like we might have a fight for Dragon here. Actually, Zed is going back. Um, so I don't think they want to fight. Actually, very low right now. Um, here comes the aggression. I2E going to hop onto the Nar. Nar going to boomerang and jump away. So far, no teams are going for the dragon just yet. Hex Drinker does pop. Oh, this could be a dead Mendoza, and it is. Jaden <laughs> gets the kill. Okay, Very now silly. it seems like they're probably looking to do a dragon with the, the death of Nar. Yeah, especially they saw Echo in the top lane. Um, looks like NYMBW is going to have the position on Team Sai right now. As Amumu misses the, the bandage toss. <laughs> is there for the smite, though? All things considered, I still think this game is pretty even so far. It's, each team has their advantages here and there, but for the most yeah. part, everything is pretty equal. I think this is a really good matchup. Seems like Team Psy, all of their games have been stomp. <laughs> and um, it's it's nice to see that there's an even game in the Iowa. Right now, the standings, if you look at it, it seems like they're, <laughs> there are a bunch of teams tied for first, and there are a bunch of teams tied for last. So the Zed ionization is interesting because he went from the last whisper to the Radness. Well, he's gonna go into Radness Hydra next. So I don't know. In my eyes, I still think that Borg Ghostblade would have been the better two item power spike. But hey, yeah. more power to this Zed. Yeah, I agree. As John is going to catch out Zepatina. That is a lot of damage from that tank echo. Um, going to catch the parallel conversions onto Minio. They focus their attention on Zepatina, but here comes the turnaround. They do a lot of damage, and here comes Curse of the Sad Mummy. Gets down on Echo. Echo has to use his ultimate, and that is a kill to I2E, and this could be a double kill. Yes, it is. One kill so, John, one thing to note about that 2v2 fight was that. The yeah, Moon actually only was able to hit his ulti on one person. And another thing to know about that fight is that Echo and Kassin both have shields. And that is really, really good. It's just a 2v2 fight just because the shields just make it so much harder to kill them. Like you saw right there, there was a parallel converter shield. And there was the Kassin shield off of the Q. And as you remember from before, the Q only blocks the magic damage which Nars W and Amun both do. So yeah. in all in all, that was a stronger 2e2 in their part just off of the shields. 
along with the fact that in terms of base stats, Echo does more damage, but it seems that there's gonna be a fight happening right here where it seems that this might be Kalmar's demise as he kites back into the pink war and he gets condemned into a wall for his death, but the teleport from Nar looked like he might be able to finish off the draw that was started. And Moon and <laughs> Bane goes down to Nar as Nar with the whimsy on him keeps chasing after the Tam Kanjin. This is gonna be a kill onto him as well, but wait, he goes into Mega Nar, but the boulder finishes him off. Yeah, that was a very good reaction from uh, Men Mentos. Yeah, Mentos. Yang's <laughs> trying to be a bully right now. Trying to steal all of uh, Jaden's jungle. I feel like I'm saying Jordan, but with an accent. <laughs> Here comes Jaden. He is spotted by that pink ward though. So right now, actually pretty good wards um, for Team Sire right now. Um, not, not really any ward for uh, NYNBW. Actually, they only have one ward on the map. Looks like everyone's focusing their attention. The Kog'Maw is top lane. Zabadena is gonna get caught here. But here comes the Gnar. Christmas admin mummy goes down. Rest of team side now following Eglin right in the middle of everyone. But this vein is going to town as Yanks is going to throw down the death mark onto a bay. He's gonna have to flash away, and that was one kill as Kessen pops onto that Lulu. And he wants more. No, he doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't want none of that. Like Eglin finds Yangs, but nothing's gonna come out of it. Yeah, so despite all this chaos, the, the game is still really even. Have a zero the singer too, so he's looking to go for the Nashus 2 for right after that hourglass, which is really good for his DPS. Yeah. It seems like team size is just more coordinated than um, NYMBW. Hourglass is also nearing completion for the Kassin too, so as I mentioned from before, with two hourglasses on Kassin and Azir, Echo has Chrono Break and the Parallel Convergence Shield. The yeah. only target left now is Vayne, who's just going to get eaten by Tam Kench if she's near Tam. So right now, in terms of 5v5 team fighting, Zed doesn't exactly have a potential target to death more, so he has to look for that split push. Yeah, exactly, and that's where Zed is very good, because at this point in the game, he can 1v1 pretty much everyone. Um, maybe not the Bane, just depends on the matchup, on how it's played. So the dragon just spawned, and right now red team is close to it, and Echo is on his way to it, and the pings are coming out on it as well. And it seems like, um, actually, Men Mentos is going to get caught up by I2E. That is a lot of damage coming from that cast. And This Kassin is semi-tanky. Does have that Zonia's and Rod of Ages. Um, so he's gonna be able to jump in and not worry too much about being blown up. The dragon is still alive though, and they need to have Nar build up rage before they can decide to do any type of fighting. But Nar does have the tele teleport available in a couple of seconds, but seems the fight is gonna happen right here. With Zed using a death mark on a Kassin, he has the Ignite and the death mark proc on him, but the hourglass. Oh, he timed. Time. And then Amumu going for the third two-man ult. He has a fight. Raiders on with Echo. We're breaking back. 
and the Emperor's Vine coming out, and the, as he flashed into it, it just stops all of my <laughs> MBW. <laughs> Gotta hate when that happens. I feel like that happens a lot too. Just because of the way that the Azir ult was um, placed right there next to that wall, the Azir soldiers can't go through walls. So they, they stack on top of each other. Yeah. There's one thing I always notice where people try to flash over the wall, but instead you flash on top of it and they just get bounced back again. Yeah. It's always funny to watch. I, I play a lot of Azir, so I always find that the most humorous thing about this champion, the fact that Everyone always bounces off the wall so many times. Yeah, it's very it's very difficult to flash it correctly. Um, cause, and also, you don't... like. I feel like when that happens, I don't want to use flash on that. <laughs> Just because it's, it's, it's like 50-50 on whether it works or not. You know, I think one of the best things I saw while playing a zero one time was that... Diana tried to dive on top of me, but because I had the Emperor's Divide out, she just bounced off of the wall, but she kept, in her head, she kept trying to spam R on my champion, so oh, that, she ends up just bouncing off the wall over and over again. Yeah, the same exact thing happened to me once, where I was Azir, and the Diana kept trying to do that. It's always so funny to see, but Echo phase dives in, and it gets more than he bargained for as he gets eaten by Tam. Tam's belly always a good place to hide unless you're the enemy team. <laughs> in that case, you do not want to be in Tom Kench's belly. The belly of death. Yeah. So both, both teams kind of scared right now to really engage. Nar and the Mumu, not in the mid lane, though. Um, I don't know how much wave clear. Well, actually, now that they back off, it doesn't matter. But um, if Kog'Maw isn't there, they're not going to really have that much wave clear. Ooh, that, that Trinket is going to spot Joko Bear. So this is interesting right here because Team Psy wants to really siege this tower really hard, but there is a wave player from the red team as Kasten <laughs> for Fox 4 try to get some damage off onto the Kogma, and it seems it's going to be an easy tier 2 tower for Team Psy with the... Well, Mumu is looking to go for this flank as he bandage tosses onto Tam Kench with the Hourglass coming out from Kasten, who rip lost backwards, but he gets trapped into the curse of Sad Mummy as the teleport coming in from the Nar as the fight rages on, but he doesn't have Mega Forma, so he's just looking to try and get some souls off. Yeah, and here comes the engage from Mentos. Mentos doing his best to slow down Jaden. Jaden is going to get slowed, but the parallel converges goes back in for some reason, and here comes the rest of the team, Sai. Uh, Mentos trying to gnarl a bay into the wall does is able to do that. Eglin going to save a bay and are they going to continue to fight? Um, here comes the disengage from Eglin. They are running right now. Eglin is going to get. Oh, the bowler does land. He does catch it. So this could be the egg of, end of Eglin. <laughs> That's the egg of Eglin. <laughs> it's, the, it's the Eglin. It's the end of. Oh, but is that what's the person during all of this? But it doesn't really matter much because the captain has the potential to move on and with the hourglass. But oh wait, I got to actually on cooldown right now. Yeah, he also does have two levels on him. Uh, Zeb does. You have. A lot of damage going down, and this should be the turret for NYMBW. Uh, there's the Emperor's Divide onto Zabadina. Zabadina gonna get saved by the Lulu, but here comes the re-engage. Secret Santa, Scarlet Santa, gonna pop somebody. And Yang's gonna get exhausted. I2E in the middle of everyone. Abay trying to do as much as he can, but there's no team to help him out. And that is a dead Abay. <laughs> So I found it interesting that so Choco Beer on the Azir decided to go for the Emperor's Divide insect play, but instead of getting a multiple team into it, it was just Nar. And while 
in retrospect, it's not bad to get one person into your team, but the fact that it's Snar and the fact that he didn't die quickly enough, because you see that after he does the insect play, he hourglasses immediately, which is it's both good and bad at the same time because it's good because he wants to protect himself after doing the play, but it's bad because now he's opened up to Zed's damage output from the death mark. But during that play, the tank catch does eat him to avoid some of the damage but at the same time. You just, because you wasted the Emperor's Divide on trying to make that play, you have no more self peel against the rest of the MYMBW because Blue Whimsy on a frontline member is still very, very good backline threat. Because in that fight, it was a lot of Whimsy on either Kalma or the Harder Nar. And this, uh, and this uh, Nar actually does a lot of damage. You're talking the Maw Mount Mordius Nar at this moment in time, so. The lower he gets in HP, the more AD he gets off of the mods passive now. Yep. And that is a strong... It's going to be annoying for Team Side to deal with as Hagi now going to take that red buff. So, as this Juggermaw um, team team comp, uh, you know, begins to form even stronger, I don't know if uh, Team Side can really deal with this. Dragon does spawn it for a second, and MYMBW is already up there for it, but it seems that the Baron will get traded for it, but MYBNW sees this, so it seems they're rotating the Baron as well. It looks like they're going to make their way to the mid lane. MYMBW definitely does have the strength in team fight, and they know that. Sticking together. It's just a matter of if they can catch out the priority target of Kog'Maw. Be very hard to do though, just because of the Lulu being there with him. Yeah, Lulu's Scarlet Santa doing an excellent job being the secret Santa to. <laughs> Hi, Hi Tui, e. trying to catch someone out. You know, hop onto Nar. I don't know if that's the right target. Oh, does find hacking now. Hacking now in a lot of trouble and goes down. That's the right target. But a four-man Nar ultimate is going to hit up. And there's the Emperor's Divide to throw them above on the other side of the wall. But here's the rest of NYMBW. Eglin, going to get caught up. And that is still pretty much everyone for uh, NYMBW. And here comes the death mark on Chocobar. Doesn't even need the, uh, the pop to happen. And this should be Baron. So as I mentioned from before, this composition right here from Team Side doesn't have a primary form of engage, so they can't let the start fights, but at the same time, if they don't start the fight, then they open themselves up to gain the fight being engaged upon down from either Amumu's ultimate or Nara's ultimate, so it's really, really hard because you're in a place of what do you do when it comes to team fighting? And it's not looking too great for Team Sai right now. Um, just gave a Baron down by 11,000 gold. Um, and especially with this team comp, I don't know what they can do. They did catch out Kog'Maw, but it didn't matter. Because of that Gnar ultimate. Managed to catch four people. Amazingly enough, this is MYMBW with the 12k goalie at the moment off of the Baron buff. And that is a Baron up Banner of Command um, cannon minion there. <laughs> Not gonna do much because of that vein. Uh oh, I2E caught out right now. Zed throws down the death mark, and that is a dead I2E. Actually, a lot of damage from the Z build. So much attack damage. Yang does not like Polly. Oh. <laughs> oh. <no. laughs> that was perfect. That was. That a was the alley -oop. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's unfortunate. And he was actually stuck in that wall too after the Emperor's of I came out just because he couldn't move because of the soldiers. 
that was. I feel was so like sad a, for Anwar. If, if there were the rest of the team there, that would have been like how Team Side could have gotten out of this hole. like Team Sai trying to catch out somebody being very desperate and finding a target just to assassinate. But um, NYMBW is doing a very good job at just staying together. They know what their strengths are. Minus the Zed. Looks like um, Baron Buff is about to run out, so Team Side did a very good job of just defending their base uh, despite Baron being down. So the Dragon's gonna be alive in two minutes at the moment, so that's gonna be very good for MIMBWs because they're at that third dragon sack and the fifth dragon will be approaching for them in about the 52 minute mark, but I'm gonna assume the game will be probably over before them, but who knows, we'll see what happens. Yeah. I think so too, especially if someone gets talked out right here, like I2E. So far, this, this this siege is not going too well for NYMBW. Not really able to do much. But here comes the aggression from Team Side. Trying to make a play here. Not able to quite catch that Zed. Have uh, an aggressive Jordan trying to go on. Eglin gonna flash, not able to get the devour. But here comes Jordan. Jordan taking really low, and Zed is just going to find him here and kill him. Here comes the Snarl catches a bay, and that is the 80 carry down for Team Psy. And this should be the push, perhaps, to win the game. Actually, it is three members, so this might not be end of game, but this definitely will be an inhibitor. We're at minute 42, and the first inhib of the game is taken by NYNBW. Tower's gonna get tanked right here, too, as they look to get two inhibs out. And that is the second inhibitor. And it's not looking good for Team Psy. Dragon's gonna be alive now with the Baron following in a minute. And with the spawn of that Baron, it could mean the end for Team Psy because they have two in hips down. But Zed is gonna death mark onto the cast and who uses the hourglass, but the oh, <laughs> Seer no. actually oh. helping him out right there. The Emperor <laughs> survived. Wow. When you get betrayed by your own teammate, yeah, feels bad, man. And I too, you must not be happy with that. Do you see the report Azir? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like this game, pretty much snowballed because of those team fights. Um, team side not able to team fight properly, and it's more of they just didn't have as good of a comp as um, NYMBW and NYMBW is playing the way that they're supposed to. And 
And that Mininar is as big as Kog'Maw, though. He's even bigger. Uh oh, Nar trying to work on Vayne. Vayne is going to condemn him against the wall, and this actually could be a dead man twist. But here comes the Mega Nar. Going to get. Oh, that is funny. He am in the middle of the hop. But the ult does come out, and the Bay is going to. Oh, actually, he's going to live a little bit, but the Zed using the death mark onto the Tan Ken tries to fight Rages on behind him with Tan following the Zed. Bane's still barely alive, though, as Red Team tries to go for the tower push. And then it's, there, we have the Super Minion Wave actually pushing on the bottom side, and that's Tuba Caston. Griff walking in offensively, but he seems he's going to be regretting his decision soon enough as he goes down. Oh, wow. Kogma shortly falling after. Yeah. And Baron is up, though. So they turn their attention to just falling back. This blue buff. Zed is able to get the final inhibitor. Absolutely chunks. Zed has that double, um, double life still build. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, it is. The, the Rav and the... BT is also a lot of attack damage too. Yeah, no attack speed. Uh, I guess he doesn't need that or crits. He has a lot of sustain and has that maw shield, so very hard just to kill. Um, Baron is going to be taken. And we should there are also three inches down too, so this looks like it's probably going to be the end of the game right here with just this Baron Siege. Yeah, the timer for the end of the game is. Less than three minutes at this point. Oh, that's a dead I2E. Emperor's Vite gonna go down. Um, not gonna be able to do that much as here comes the bay. Taking a lot of damage just from the shadow, and that is. Oh, he survives! But Chris the Sad Mummy is going to pick up that kill onto a bay. That is no AD carry. Sugar Bear, really low. Going to have to... Oh, that was a really away. fast Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, that Lulu. Oh, that's the triple, and that should be game. Yeah, and that is going to be game right now. Team... Or not Team Psy, and my NBW getting the win over Team Psy. Only Team Psy's second loss of the season. But yeah, very unfortunate that we weren't quite able to do it just because, you know, they, they weren't, they didn't have any bans, so they weren't able to do anything much in terms of the picks. Because if I'm assuming that it says there were no bans, these are basically just. Comfort picks, for the most part. I'm, this is what I'm assuming off of what NYMBM picked. Yeah, and I, I'm being told that um, had um, teams I had their bands, if they would have been Zed, not. <laughs> so that's what happens when you uh, don't <laughs> prepare for your games and submit your rosters in time. Or who knows, maybe it would have been the, the strat to just take away some of the picks that they play. Because if you see that the guy is very good at playing Zed, I want to actually mid laner.